Good morning. Today, I want to read a book about the golden rule. Have you heard of the golden rule? Do to others what you would have them do to you. Sometimes we hear it like this, treat others the way you want to be treated. This book is The Berenstain Bears and the Golden Rule. It was created or written by Stan and Jan Berenstein with Mike Berenstein. The Berenstein Bears and the Golden Rule. When Sister Bear received a beautiful golden locket for her birthday, she was surprised and pleased. It was shaped like a heart and it had her name on it. Happy birthday, dear, said Mama and Papa Bear, giving her a big hug. Sister tried the locket on and she looked at herself in the mirror. I love it, she said. I'm going to wear it all the time. It opens up, said Papa. Look. He showed her the little golden clasp that you pressed to pop the locket open. Neat, said Sister. She looked inside, expecting to find a little picture or mirror or something. But all that she could see inside the locket were a few words. Do to others what you would have them do to you. Sister was puzzled. The words seemed familiar. She wasn't sure why. What's this? She asked. It's the golden rule, explained Mama. What's that? Sister wondered. Mama's eyes widened. <gasps> the golden rule is one of the most important rules there is, she explained. That's why we have always had it hanging up on the wall of our living room. And she pointed to the framed sampler above their mantelpiece. Sister gazed up at it in amazement. She had seen that sampler every day of her life. No wonder the words seemed familiar. Oh, she said, a little embarrassed. I never really thought about what it said before. What does it mean? The golden rule, Papa explained, tells you to treat other people the way you want to be treated yourself. Why is it inside my locket, she wondered. It's a golden rule inside a golden locket for a little golden princess, said Papa, giving her a big kiss. It's called the golden rule, explained Mama patiently, because it's precious, just like gold. But it's not about the gold you wear around your neck or on your finger. She held out her wedding ring. It's about the golden treasure we keep inside our own hearts. The heart shape of the locket is meant to remind you of that. Sister thought it over. She didn't really get it, but that was okay. She loved the new locket anyway. The next day before school, Sister showed off her new treasure to her friends Lizzie, Millie, Anna, and Linda. They oohed and aahed over it in a very satisfying way. What's all the fuss about? asked a voice. It was Queenie McBear and her gang. Queenie was older than Sister and a little snooty. When Queenie first came to the neighborhood, she and Sister did not get along at all. Queenie made fun of her and got Sister's friends to join in. And that was Sister's first experience with an in-crowd, a group that makes itself feel big by making others feel small. Oh, hi, Queenie, said Sister. I was just showing the kids my new locket. Over the years, Sister learned to get along with Queenie, but they were never best of friends. Let's see, said Queenie. She looked the locket over. She was not impressed. She herself had big hoop earrings and lots of beads and chains. Cute, she said as she walked away with her friends. Queenie still had her own in crowd. They were a group of older girls who liked hanging out together and acting cool. Mostly, they spent their time painting their nails and giggling about boys. But it, that was okay with Sister. She had her own group of friends to hang out with, but it never occurred to her that this might be any kind of problem until the new girl came to school. Her name was Susie McGrizzy, and it seemed like a funny sort of name. For one thing, it had a lot of Z's in it. The new girl herself seemed a little funny too. Her clothes weren't exactly cool and she wore her hair up in pigtails, which was definitely not the standard in Bear County. Besides, she had thick glasses and braces. Not the cool kind with lots of different colors like Millie wore, just plain old braces. On her first day, of course, the new girl didn't know anyone at all. At recess, Sister noticed her standing off by herself in a corner of the playground. She looked sort of sad and lonely. Sister was thinking about going over and introducing herself when Lizzie and Anna came up. Hiya, Sister, said Lizzie. We're getting together a game of hopscotch. Millie and Linda are over there. Come on. Sister began to follow them, but she paused and glanced back to where the new girl was standing all by herself. The new girl 
looked lonelier than ever. Wait a minute, said Sister. What about that new girl? That, uh, what's her name? The one over there. Maybe we should invite her to join in. She looks pretty lost and lonely. The other girls were surprised. Susie Hoosie face, said Lizzie doubtfully. She has weird clothes, said Anna. And those corny pigtails, said Lizzie. Not to mention those clunky glasses and braces, added Anna. Well, said Sister, discouraged. I just thought... Oh, don't worry about old Susie McWoozy, said Lizzie, taking Sister's arm. She'll be fine. She'll find some other cubs to play with. Cubs more her type. Come on. Sister allowed herself to be led away to the hopscotch game. She felt a little worried about Susie McWoozy, even though she couldn't exactly say why. But she soon forgot all about it while playing hopscotch with her friends. Later, when school let out, Sister got in line for her school bus. She noticed that the new girl was standing right in front of her. She was going to say hi, but then Lizzie came up behind her, and they started to talk. They went on talking as they got on the bus. Susie McGrizzy sat right behind them. Sister and Lizzie went right on talking together. Sister played with her new locket as she talked, twirling it around and around in the air. When the bus came to her stop, Sister gathered up her things to get off, but she felt a soft tug at her arm. It was Susie McGrizzy, and she was holding something out to Sister. Here, she said shyly, you dropped this. It was Sister's new locket. Gee, said Sister, thanks. It was all she could think of to say. Sister climbed off the bus and she watched it pull away. She could see Susie looking back at her from the window. Sister hung her locket back around her neck. What if Susie hadn't noticed her drop it? It might have been gone for good. Mama was waiting for Sister as she climbed the front steps. How was school today, dear? Asked Mama. Oh, okay, I guess sighed sister, dumping her school bag on the armchair in the living room. She glanced up at the framed sampler of the golden rule over the mantel. Somehow, the golden locket hanging around her neck felt heavier than before. That evening at dinner, sister was unusually thoughtful. She picked at her lima beans and stared off into space. A penny for your thoughts, said Papa as he fed Honey Bear. Huh? said sister, looking up. Oh, I was just thinking about that golden rule inside my locket, she explained. I don't really get it. What's it supposed to mean? Well, began Mama, let me give you an example. Do you remember that trouble you had when Queenie first moved to town? Sister perked up and paid attention. She remembered it all too well. Do you remember how Queenie started an in crowd but kept you out and made fun of your clothes and hair bow? Mama asked. Do you remember how badly you felt? Boy, did she ever. Sister started to feel hurt just thinking about it. Her lower lip began to quiver, and a tear came to her eye. All that the golden rule is saying, Papa continued, is that you shouldn't turn around and do that same sort of thing to someone else. He paused to scrape some mashed potatoes off of Honey's chin. You should always treat other people the way you would want to be treated yourself. But I would never do anything like that, said Sister. Besides, I don't have an in-crowd. Oh, no, said Brother, who'd been taking all of this in. What about Lizzie and Anna and Millie and Linda? You play with them all the time, but I never see you asking anyone else to join in. Well, that's different, protested Sister angrily. I'm just playing with my friends. We're not trying to keep anybody out. Of course not, dear, soothed Mother. I'm sure you and your friends would never dream of keeping other cubs out of your group. Sister Bear grew very quiet. Now that she thought it over, she wasn't quite so sure... Not so sure at all. The next day at recess, as soon as Sister came outside, she looked around the playground for Susie McGrizzy. She soon spotted her, sitting off by herself under the big oak tree at the edge of the schoolyard and reading a book. Sister marched right up to her. Hello, Susie, she said, she said brightly. Susie looked up in surprise. Hello, she said shyly. I'm Sister Bear, and my friends and I are going to play some hopscotch, Sister told her. Would you like to join us? Susie's face lit up. Oh, I'd love to, she said with a big bracy grin. I love hopscotch. Terrific, said Sister. Do you want to see my locket? Sure, said Susie. Okay, said Sister. Come on, I'll show it to you. Over there. Sister took it off, at, or took off, and Susie chased her, laughing, across the playground to the hopscotch square, where Lizzie, Millie, Anna, and Linda were all waiting. Sister's golden locket gleamed in the sun as she ran.
What made Sister change her mind about inviting Lizzie to play with them? What does it mean to treat others the way you want to be treated?